Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Let's get closer to God. So this video is about, it's about meditation. It's about what what I have experienced that probably none of you have ever experienced in your life. And to be honest with you, it really, it brings me to tears whenever I think about it. In fact, even making this video, it's taken me two hours just to find the right song, just to finally just, just go for it. So all I did was I opened the door and I let God come in. You know, essentially all I did was I just, I opened up and I held my hands out and I received my gift. See, I don't want this to be a fantasy for you. I don't want you to just be like, oh, this is, you know, in the movies or some Buddhist monk 50 or, or 5,000 years did this or Jesus, this one being walked on the water. I, I want this to be an actual real life ex physical experience for you. See, a lot of people think, well, um, I just have blind faith. That, I, If you think it's about having blind faith without actual real life experiences and, and understandings, you're completely missing the boat. That is not what Jesus was about. That's not what God's about. The whole purpose is to go back to the Garden of Eden and have those actual experiences of actually being with God, of experiencing God. So I'll give you I'll give you one example. So one night I had this um, this vision where I was saying the words that somebody else was saying at the same time that they were saying while we were walking towards in the same direction towards each other. Okay. So the very next day, a Ben and I we went out to um, I think it was either Chipotle or um, the Panda Rest. It's a Chinese food, it's called Panda something, I've heard it's called Panda Restaurant. And we were walking out and then we took a right and we're walking down the sidewalk, we're at the, like out, it's like an outside mall, or, or this was on the outside of the mall where the restaurants are. And I was talking to him about something and as I was talking, there was a guy, I think he might have been Indian, I'm not, he was dark skin color, that's all I remember. He was talking to someone and they were walking towards us and as we got close, our words synced up exactly. And I just kept talking and he kept talking. And as we were passing, we started staring at, at each other like, what the hell? Like, how are you doing that? And, a, and I looked at a Ben of him like, did you hear that? And he goes, how did you do that? I'm like, I don't know. So this is what meditation can do for you. It can open you up to these these call it surreal or unbelievable or amazing experiences okay and I, okay here's the deal i'm gonna be really honest with you i'm getting back into meditation i've been meditating every day starting slow at about 30 to 40 minutes right now i'm gonna bump it up to an hour in about a week just it's consistency okay because it doesn't happen the first time you do it it takes a while so in a few videos back i don't remember if it was two three or four or five videos but i said when I was a little kid and I would walk to church and it wasn't the first time to church, but I was old enough to where I could go into the kids room. Okay. I, so at this point I could walk. Okay. So they walked me in there and they showed me a picture of Jesus and they told me how he healed people and turned water into wine and, and all this, this, these miracles. And from that point forward, I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to see if this was real. So 
essentially what all my teachings are about is to get you closer to God. Okay, it's not about me at all. It's, it's, it's you know, it's like I want to push you and get you to realize you can reconnect with God. And I don't mean like, oh, I had a good feeling. I mean, I mean, have actual real life experiences where other people around you be like, how are you doing that? Like, what, what's going on? Like, they will experience it. They will see it. So what I want to say, okay, this is what I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. So what I, what I want to say is, I want to show you how. I want to teach you how to have these experiences. So I'm going to teach a couple things in this video. So a really important concept, okay? So here's the other thing. To really be able to physically teach this to you, you're going to have to come into that my course. It's the course on internal awareness and emotional grounding. And here's why. I'm going to be teaching you different processes, different things that you do with your awareness and your energy and your emotions that shift you out of the space that you're stuck in. So it pops you out of it, okay? And then you pop open to a different a different world, a different way of perceiving and experiencing things, okay? And when you do that, you'll finally understand what I'm going to share right now. So number one, God is always communicating to you. Okay, maybe not every single moment, but God communicates to you. Here's, here's the challenge. Are you open to receive it? In other words, okay, it's real simple. A lot of people think, 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 talk, 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 talk listen to music. This, all and here, here what happens is the message is coming into your, your, your energy field. It's coming into your brain. It's coming into your ears. You just weren't aware you, enough to receive it because you physically, okay, your body physically received it. But did you, did you hear it? So, okay. Okay, so when I teach men the internal awareness, what it does is it connects them to their, their body. This is where you connect with your flesh, meaning connecting to your five senses, see, hear, feel, smell, and taste. Now, these are physically received through your physical body. It's processed in the right brain, but you feel it and experience it in your body, your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your, your, your body, your physical body, your flesh. Now, the reason why I do this is because if a man is stuck up in his head, his forehead, that means she can't connect to her emotions and then connect to her physical body and feel comfortable. In order for a woman to want to be romanced and connect physically with a man, he has to connect to his body. Otherwise, she's going to be stuck up in her head and that's not going to make her happy at all. That's why Bruce Lee says, don't think, feel. So believe it or not, the purpose of the way that men and women are wired is to teach men how to become a complete whole being. Because then you can connect on a much higher level spiritually. And thus enter the Garden of Eden. Do you guys want to know what the Holy Grail is? What do you think it is? We have been taught that it's something external. It's something outside of our body. It is not. Do you want to know where I learned this? What book I read? I didn't. I wasn't taught it. When I opened up to my right brain, it became a complete being. It became really obvious the Holy Grail is your right brain. This is where you manifest from. This is where you create. And we are now at a point in time where we are about to shift into becoming manifestors. So here's the deal. The messages are everywhere. I mean everywhere. It's in cartoons. It's in music. It's in movies. It's when people are unconsciously talking to you. I am telling you, the spirit works through people, even people who don't believe in God. In fact, I learned some of the most powerful things and things to say to people from atheists. Now, did they know what they were saying? Did they know? No, they had no clue. They were just arguing, disagreeing, and one day I was like, 
Oh, like I started having realizations. God will speak through anyone. I am what I am, Popeye the Sailor Man. Does that sound familiar? It should. Jesus said it. I am that I am. It's kind of funny how that, that cartoon constantly said that over and over and over. Not just the beginning or the ending, it would say it in the cartoons. See, you're being communicated to all the time, and it becomes really clear, and I mean crystal clear. But are you connected to yourself enough to hear the messages? That's why I teach this to men on how to be internal, emotionally grounded, because it connects them. It's like plugging them in to, st to the spirit world. It's plugging them into the universe. And all of a sudden they start tuning in and they hear things differently. They see things differently. Like, how come I never noticed this before? Or here's a real typical one. Men that got divorced, they will look at me and they will just like, like you could see their brain is like, it's technically called going into trance or trance derivational search. And they'll have all these memories come up and they'll be like, oh my God, my ex-wife said that to me all the time. I didn't even hear her. It's like, I, my... My ears hurt her, but I didn't hear her. And that's what I'm talking about. The messages are everywhere. And you its I, not even, you don't even have to go to a movie or song. You will hear it in your head. So, And that's another thing. If you are not quiet enough inside. So what I've been doing for years and years is literally silencing my mind. Where there's no thought. A lot of people like they kind of when they first meet me they kind of stare at me and they get they get kind of quiet and they don't know why. And eventually I'll have to say, look, here's the deal. I get it. You're kind of freaked out. My eyes don't move. They're just doof. they they don't. Most people eyes ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong up down left right in out and down. They're all over the place. Now I might sweep the room, but I don't have that ping pong. When people are ping ponging, what they're doing is they're accessing different parts of their. Uh, communication process okay visual auditory kinesthetic etc and that's how you can tell when someone's thinking they're just ping pong ping. like it's really obvious once you silent your mind so all of a sudden you open up and you see everything it's really cool you hear everything you feel everything you're aware of things that you were never aware of before or you start to realize like wait a minute Everything that Jesus and Buddha and all those spiritual teachers have been teaching us, it's all real. And yes, it is all real. One of the things I began to notice is a lot of people will call it tinnitus. It is not tinnitus. That is a Western-minded, two-dimensional doctor's brain going, hmm, got ringing in his ears because they probably do too. They had no clue that that's not what they call tinnitus. That's the spirit, spirit world, God, whatever you want to call it, an angel, whatever, that's communicating to you. It's, down, it's literally downloading information. So when I went through my awakening when I was 20 years old, like all of a sudden, like, like, like you know that old, the old dial-up, the computers had, the that noise it made, that really weird kind of computer digital noise? I started noticing that, and I was like, what the hell is this? Like... And at first I thought, oh, is that tinnitus? Oh, and I'm like, God, I'm not even that old. Because usually people get tinnitus when they get old or, you know, they're around loud noises like shotguns every day or, you know, military guys that were shooting cannons or in a tank. But I had never been around and like every single day or just hearing loud noises like that for, like I'd, I'd never had that experience. So I'm like, well, I don't have that and I don't play the music loud. And like, why would I have tinnitus at such a young age? Well, Here's what I started to notice. I started to notice after I would have one of those, and the thing it would last for, who knows, three minutes, five minutes, maybe longer, and then eventually it would go away. But then all of a sudden, the next day or two or three days, I, I, would, know, I would know something and not know, well, how do I know this? Like, what is this? That's a download. So over the years, it became really obvious, like, I would understand what someone's going to say before they're going to say it, or I would tell someone, hey, this is going to happen, and then boom, it'll happen, like, later on in the day or the next day, and they're like, well, how did you know that? I'm like, I just 
I just do. It's, an, it's what I call a knowing. So when you begin to meditate, you start to tune in because here's why. Because you silent not only your mind, your inside your skull, but inside your heart and inside your solar plexus and belly, you become quiet inside and then you can hear when God speaks within you and through you. Now, you may not actually hear something. Now, I'm, I'm one of those people, I don't hear voices. I feel thoughts, okay? I get a feeling like, oh, okay, and I'll just know. Now, it's almost like the feeling gives me like a sentences of words, like almost typed up, I would say. So, if, remember the, the video I did just uh, the night before this one? when it talks about predicate systems. So you might be more visual, you might be more auditory, you might be more kinesthetic. Now, the, the one that shocked me was auditory digital. There is a way that auditory digital people can receive information, okay? It's different. But the problem is they tend to be thinker, thinker, thinker. So it's very hard for them to stop that thinking, okay? But that's what it's all about. Empty your mind, be formless, be shapeless. Be water, my friend. Bruce Lee. So we hear these messages everywhere. A lot of people that, okay, even a lot of martial artists, they love Bruce Lee, but they have no clue what that means. And I'm going to give you a deeper level. So it's like a lot of people like Bruce Lee talks about don't think, feel, and just react. In other words, my there's a, there's a, a video of Bruce Lee in a movie where he says, I don't remember exactly, but he's saying it to his master like, my, I, I do not do, I just experience. My body reacts on its own. In other words, I stay out of its way. There's I don't think... See, this is the whole thing. When you go into a fight with no thoughts and you let your body do what it's supposed to do naturally, you'll win the fight. It's when you begin to start thinking, go, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, that's when you get stuck. That's when you slow down. Now that, that is a logical understanding, which well, won't do shit for you. Now, here's what I mean. When I really, really, really got into meditation, it took a while. I don't remember if it was six months or three months or I, it was probably six months or longer is I sat down like in the image right there, except I put my hands together right beneath my belly button and I uh, clasped my hands together like in a circular motion where the energy will flow. Um, so they, they're, they're together, you know, beneath uh, around the sacral chakra. And so I will meditate that way. Now, here's what happened. Now, it happened a few times, probably for a while, and I just didn't even notice it. So here I was going to do my deep breathing technique and relaxing and, and clearing my mind and emptying my mind. And all of a sudden, my spine started. Now, it didn't happen right away. This was probably a good 20 minutes into it, 30 minutes. A, a, I was into it, maybe even an hour. Okay, this is back when I would meditate literally for hours at a time. And all of a sudden, my spine started straightening up. And I'm like, who the hell's doing that? What, what, what's going on? So I had to clear my mind again and re kind of reset. And I started going back into this emptiness, this just complete void. And my, and my entire spine and neck like rose up like they... It's like, how do I explain this? It's like there's this energy that goes from the universe down through the top of your head, down through your spine, all the way into the earth, and it aligns on its own. In fact, if you try to do it, it collapses it. It's like the minute you interrupt that flow, it, it breaks it up and you got to kind of start all over. Now, if you're that deep, it'll be easier to get back to it. But the whole purpose is to not do anything. So essentially, something, I call it the energy, the spirit, takes over. It just aligns you, and it's like, wow, your shoulders, your spine, everything aligns on its own, and it's like, it lifts you up, like it lifts your spine up, okay? And you're like, well, like it is, it is, it, okay, here, okay, here's another really cool thing. There's no pain. You could have a broken leg, and you won't feel it. 
there's no exhaustion. There's no... You, I don't know how to explain it. There's no nothing. You just feel good. There's this... It's nirvana. Now remember, in the Old Testament, God is continually, constantly saying and stating... In fact, I said it to Pastor Rex, he says, is if God says something, I take that as a command, like he's telling me, do this. It's not a request. And he goes, yeah. And now we were talking about this word, meditate. Most Christians, oh, meditation is evil. You know, and another one, there's actually guys that are Christians on YouTube making videos. No, no, no. Don't clear your mind. Don't, don't meditate. Don't silence your mind. No, no. You want to have constant thinking and constant thoughts in there. And I'm thinking, what the hell are they talking about? So as I've said in the past, I went to Pastor Rex with all these markings in my Bible. It says, God literally says right here, meditate upon these words. Um, uh, I just lost the next one, but here's another one. I might be saying it wrong, but it says meditate upon this parable. Uh, meditate upon these words, meditate upon this parable. And there's, there's a couple other ones in there. And I go, so why do Christians so against meditating? He goes, I don't know. He goes, they're not reading the Bible. So when I got really good at this, and I'm going to give you another really important teaching, is, okay, I went over to my sister's place, and I went in, and her friend Sherry was there, and I think, uh, God, what was that other girl's name, Susan, no, not Susan, I can't think of her, Sandy, and they were all there, we were in our 20s, they were probably about 23 or something, I was about 28, no, maybe they were about 25, I was 28, and I was saying stuff, I go, I go, oh, you're thinking this right now, and my sister goes, what? And then I kept doing it. And she's like, how are you doing that? Like, are you doing some kind of trick? And I was like, no, I'm not. I go, I can read your mind. She says, no, you can't. And so now, mind you, this was when I was meditating like for hours. And I'd been doing it every day for years, okay? And so I go, I think she grabbed the deck. Yeah, she grabbed the deck card. She goes, okay, what is this? I go, oh, that's a four of hearts. And she's like, what? And she kept doing it. And I called every single one. That's ace of diamonds. And seven of clubs and I kept doing over and over and she goes oh you must have marked this deck now it wasn't my deck it was hers and I never went over to her place so well, rarely and so she goes I've got a brand new deck in my room so she went and got it brought it out and I started doing boom ace of hearts king of spades and I just over and over and at this point Sandy and Sherry were like what the hell is going on here and I went up to about 12 or 14 and my sister literally burst out in tears and she's like, oh, are you doing that? And I'm like, Amber, like when you meditate, you can open up to this stuff. Now, here's another really cool experience that I had. I was uh, at the Richmond Temple um, in Richmond, California, Buddhist Temple. And now here's the deal. The monks have always done this. Now, this is a different temple. There's three temples that I used to go to. One was in Stockton. I went to Sacramento. And then when I moved over here, I went to the Richmond one for a while. And what happened was they had invited me back into, there's like a quiet room where they meditate. And they, you know, the head monks lined up in front and then us in the back. Okay. So here's the funny thing. Buddhist monks have always, even the first day I walked into the temple, they've always said, yeah, you're a monk. And they've always treated me that way. So they invited me back and, oh God, this is a funny story. So what happened was as we were meditating, it, I, this came to me out because like, again, I'm on this journey. I have to know. So I was like, if you can hear me, turn around. <laughs> and I'm sitting, now I'm saying this in my head. I'm like, turn around and look at me. So here's the funny thing. He turned around and looked at me and I looked at him and for some reason it didn't dawn on me. Like, wait a minute, he's actually doing what I'm asking. So then I started meditating again, getting quiet and stuff. And I was like, man, I've got to know. And so I asked again and he turned around again and looked at me like, like yeah, okay. Like, yeah, I hear you. And I said, can you, if you can hear me, turn around and look at me. And he, he got up, he not got up, but he kind of like leaned up because we we're all on the ground and he looked around, he looked at me like, yeah, okay, I hear you. And he didn't say that, but he looked at me and I'm like, wait a minute is this real and then when i thought that thought the youngest monk in the room started bursting out laughing and then the, a couple of the other monks in the back they looked at me they're smiling they're laughing and i'm like can you guys hear me <laughs> and again they started laughing and i'm like okay this is interesting so then i wanted to make now at this point i was pushing it 
<laughs> so I was like, it got really quiet again. We're all meditating. <laughs> and then, and I thought, man, I could just do it one more time. I want to know. And he finally, the head monk looks at me like, yeah. Like, he didn't say yeah, like verbally, but he looked at me like, yeah. And at this point, I got embarrassed because I had really pushed it too far. But it was a really good learning experience for me. And it was hilarious. And the little monk, man, he, him and there's another big monk next to me. They were just like grinning from ear to ear the whole time. So I've been meditating again recently and I'm, I'm making a commitment to it. Um, here's another really weird thing. Like I stopped caffeine dead in its tracks. I don't know. I just like about two months ago, it was actually three months ago. I said, yeah, I'm going to start backing off. Now I never did much caffeine at all. So it was kind of easy for me, but I was like, yeah, I just don't want to do this. Cause it's like all that scatteredness, it's not worth it. So when I was meditating, I think it was yesterday. It just kind of came to me because when you meditate and you're, you're clear, it feels so much better. You just like all your it's here, all your worries go away. And here's the thing that I, that you realize like wow, all of this stuff is in my head. Like I'm literally making, I'm literally like torturing myself for no reason. Oh, and by the way, the reason why the narcissist attacked you, especially if it was recently, last two, three, four, five years, is because you were starting to open up, even if you didn't realize it, you were starting to experience things. And so here's what they did. They got in your head, they caused chaos. And what happens, what happened to you? For a lot of us that went through that three plus year, four year, you know, what do they call it? Uh, I just, for something of the tower, the tower moment. Dark night of the soul or whatever you want to call it, collapsing the tower. So what happens is all of a sudden your peace went away. And you started thinking, thinking, and worrying. Oh my God, are they going to attack me? Are they going to do this? Ah, and, they, and they got in your head, right? And so what were they doing was, if they can do that, they can disconnect you from the messages from God, from the guidance, from just the love. So the goal is to get so good at having clarity, clarity of mind with nothingness, just like this image. If I took those words out, that's what it's like. There's nothing. There's not a single thought. So when you work with me, each session that we do, I will constantly be working within either using an actual technique or I'm going to be doing something with my energy and I'm watching and listening to your languaging and what's going on. And I'm essentially got out. It's like I'm clearing stuff out to where eventually the goal is to have what I call um, walking meditation. In fact, I teach these techniques, walking meditation techniques in that internal awareness and emotionally grounding class that I keep bringing up. So if you guys want to do it, you have to let me know and I'll set something up in four weeks. Okay. It's time to get close to God. Empty your mind, be formless, be shapeless, be water, my friend, Bruce Lee. Oh, you didn't know that that was biblical? Well, we're about to get biblical right now and you're going to see. We are going to enter the void. The idea of meditation is absolutely nothing. That's how you can begin to feel and experience and receive messages, okay? And sometimes you receive the message, but you don't really become conscious of it until a day or two later, or it'll come back to you right before you're supposed to, to, to do something or meet someone. And all of a sudden you'll have this awareness. Something I want to say real quick, shifting subjects is what I find out with a lot of like, I have to use the word Christians. So they see something that says, be nothing. It doesn't mean that you're nothing. It means to empty your mind and be clear so now you can receive, okay? But a lot of people not really delving in, meditating upon these words, as the Bible says, is they will take stuff like this and say, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm No, no it's, it's, it's that you can't, you can't earn your way into salvation. In other words, you can't pay God off like, hey, I'm going to pay you some money, but don't tell no one, hey, we're going to do it under the table. You know what I'm saying? Mafia style. No, it's you, you can't pay for it because... There's nothing to pay for. Salvation is a gift from God. It always has been. It's free. It doesn't mean that you're not worthy because you can't pay for it. All you have to do is open up and receive it. And that's what I said to the church. I said, the only difference between me and all of you is 
I opened up, received my gift, and I opened it up. Trust me, God loves you, each and every one of you. You are valuable to God. You, your life has meaning. Okay, God created you this way. You are cherished by God. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not worthy. That is crap. You are worthy. Sure, they're right. You can't pay for it. You can't you can't do some kind of works on the planet where you, you get to trade it like you're like you know you're bartering with God. But th that doesn't mean that you're not worthy. Because it's a gift from God. When you give your friend a gift, you're not saying, "Hey, man, do you want to pay for this?" You know, you gotta you gotta barter with me. It's like no, it's a gift out out of love from God's heart. I am what I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I am that I am Jesus Christ. When you silence your ego, when you silence your logical thinking brain, it opens a door to the right brain, which connects you to the energy field. So when there is nothingness inside, now you have everything. So when there's nothingness going on, now you can experience everything. You can hear everything. You can be aware of things that have always been there that you didn't even notice because you're essentially blinding yourself or closing the door to it. So here's the deal. This void that I'm talking about is where you create from, okay? So let me read King James again really quick. So this is verse 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what does all of this mean? So... Think of it as a painting, a, a canvas. So you get a canvas that's empty. There's nothing on it. So now you can create your work, your artwork. I'm going to be really blunt um, to the point. When you get to that space of what I call the void, that is when you can manifest. That's when you can create. Okay? It's really important. Like I literally, I just gave you the master secret. Enter the void. So it's the whole thing of the, the uh, Adam and Eve and, and the garden and the serpent is it got us stuck in our thinking, thinking, thinking. And that is what blocks you from the void. When you silence that, when you get out of your tree of knowledge, the logical thinking brain, everything goes silent. Now there's nothing. There's not even a sun. There's not even light. There is nothingness. So when I meditate and I begin to enter this space, it is, man, it's, it's kind of funny because there is no light, yet you have complete consciousness. Now, here's the weird thing. It's not like you fall asleep or something. No, you are very conscious in, the, in this moment when you're in this space. And it's not like you're in the dark either. It's, it's kind of funny because in a way it is dark, but in other ways, you're very aware. You're just very, it's in here. Okay, here's, here's the part I'm going to say. The nothingness part. It's. I'm just going to say it this way because I, I don't know a 3D <laughs> dimensional way to explain this. It's as if your body disappears. It's as if everything disappears. When you're in that complete perfection of nirvana silence. Where there's nothingness. There's literally nothing. And from that space. From that place. That's how you can begin to manifest and absolutely create. And that is what the book of Genesis was trying to talk about. And I'm just realizing now, I said it earlier in this video, but that's what the serpent in the garden, the uh, i.e. the narcissist, do. They try to get you all thinking, thinking, confused, states of fear. When you can completely let go of all of that, everything opens up to you. I cannot find a, a good, it, you know, it's something you're going to have to experience in order to understand. I can't put it into words. Words do not, they do not explain it. They don't, words don't do it justice, like not even close. The only thing I can say is this, 
the stuff that we've heard about Jesus and Buddha and all these teachings, they're absolutely real. This space, this void is absolutely real. Here's the deal. Animals communicate telepathically. I, I'm not just saying it's because, oh, it's a good thing to say or I, you know, I read it. In a, no, I, I know this. I don't think this. I don't believe this. It's not my faith. I know this because when you get to this space of void, you can communicate and understand other people without words. Now, here's the thing. When you communicate in this way, it, it is a much, much greater clarity. You get a real richness and depth of understanding of what someone's saying. And you're thinking, wait, but see, here's the deal. Words, words literally get in, in the way of clarity when it comes to communication. Word, you know, when you use word, words are very limited. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's one of the things that when you understand linguistics, you start to go, well, words are blocked. Yeah, words are blocking out. And, they, and it's literally, it's the Garden of Eden all over again. It's like the serpent, tr serpent tricked us into words, into our logical brain. The other way is much better for everything, including manifestation. The reason why I'm so effective at helping people is because I'm receiving on, on, on an emotional level, on a, on a deeper level of what they're communicating. If I just listen to the words, I, it would take me forever to understand them. Okay, so let's end this and wrap this up and let's start at the beginning of the Bible. Genesis, okay? Let's see if I, oh, here it is, okay. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So we're talking about the void, the emptiness. Now listen closely. Now mind you, when you have these experiences and all of a sudden like you have this complete emptiness, not a single thought, not, not even an emotion, it's just this... It, it's this wonderful clarity of nothingness, the void. Here's what it says. Genesis chapter 1, the King James Version. Verse 1. Genesis 1, chapter, or chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Emptiness. There was nothingness. There was emptiness. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, this is really important. So what do you have so far? You have nothing. You have a void. You have emptiness. Verse 3, the next verse. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That is manifestation. That is creation. Many, 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 many years ago, again, it was around when I was 20 years old, I was reading the Bible like from beginning to ending for probably the eighth or 10th time. And it became really obvious. Like back then, like there was nothing but struggle. Everything was a struggle just to get food. Like even during Jesus' time, it was a little bit better. But if you go further back in the caveman era, it, everything was this unbelievable struggle. And yet God was talking about creation in the very beginning of the book of Genesis. And it dawned on me, we were supposed to begin to move forward in time to get to a point where we had transportation, vehicles, air, airplanes, trains, communication. Communication and transportation are the foundation of our ability to begin to create. We as a society, pretty much as a world, we are at a place now where we are literally just to start, supposed to start creating. Some of it's going to be physical creations through these, our imaginations and music and art and even building vehicles and cars and, and, and everything. Everything is about creation and, and artistry. See, we were not meant to struggle. The, the whole journey, part of it was struggle, yeah, to develop us, to grow, to learn, to become conscious beings, to become conscious creators. That is why we are here. We are, see... <laughs> A lot of Christians are think are you know you it's almost like you hear from them saying well we're just nothingness we're not supposed to do nothing we're just like like blobs of slob just just sitting here we're worthless we're not no no you were created with a purpose with a meaning in mind God didn't just throw us out there and be like yeah you're just a bunch of nothings to me 
No, he wanted to see what we would do with this gift of life. He wanted to see what we would create, what we would build. We wanted to see how we would grow together as human beings, how we would interact, get along or not get along. This whole thing is a creative artistry. You are meaningful. Your life is meaningful. Okay, I get the narcissist attacked you. He hurt you. Did a lot of horrible things. To, but th the fact of the matter is, you were d designed, you were, you were created with a purpose in mind. Now get out there and start creating from your heart. All right, two things. Number one, um, I want you guys to watch this movie. The name of the movie is What Dreams May Come, and it's with Robin Williams, okay? It, I, I mentioned it in the video about four or five days ago. It's really, 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 really important because this is exactly what I've been trying to share with you to understand. It's free. It's on YouTube. Uh, what I put in there was What Dreams May Come full movie. So put that in like the search bar in the YouTube, okay? And this one is by YouTube Movies and TV. That's the name of the channel. I'm also going to put a link in the description box right beneath my phone number towards the top, okay? But I did that in one of the other videos, and I think uh, YouTube took it out. I think they have some kind of thing where, like, that link is going to be deleted because I put it in there. It's not anymore, but I'll put it in here. Hopefully, it sticks, okay? Now, I want you to watch the movie, and you're going to understand everything that I've been talking about in this video. All right, the second thing I wanted to share with you is there's a song that I've been listening that has absolutely helped me a lot. I've been listening to it for about two or three or four weeks. And I mentioned it before I put a link in there. I'm going to put a link beneath the video, beneath the movie. Okay, so the name of it is Oceans Where, sorry, Oceans Where Feet May Fail Live Hillsong United. Again, I'll put the link right there in the description right beneath the uh, movie and beneath my phone number. All right, that's it. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. If you want, go ahead and click subscribe, click the like button, make a comment. And if you want, you can go ahead and leave a donation. There's a PayPal link right there in the description box. All right, guys, God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.